Welcome back to our channel, everybody. Today we have a very special guest yet again, my wife, Andriana. She's, she's joining us yet again for another video. And this video also happens to be sponsored by Board Vitals yet again because Board Vitals is crushing it and we want to support them. So you all loved my last video when I took sample USMLE questions and I asked at the end of that video if you want me and Andriana to switch me take her PA board questions and she take my USMLE questions. I don't know how she feels about that. Uh, I don't know. I kind of roped her into that because you guys wanted it. So that's what we're doing today. All right, let's get into these questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Hit it. So we'll do five question sets. We'll switch off taking turns between me answering the pan ray questions, her answering the US only step one questions, and I will probably do terrible, just like I did last time. And I'll probably do terrible, because <laughs> I never studied for this exam. <laughs> I mean, step one is hard even when you do study, so good luck. Let's see what residency I'll be getting into. <laughs> yeah. So again, I just wanted to thank Board Vitals for sponsoring this video. As always, they have amazing question banks and have helped me throughout my entire medical career. If you want to use their question banks, they have something for literally every health profession. Use my code Dr. Cellini to get 20% off your purchase. Dr. Cellini. But let's go ahead and get into the Board Vitals question banks right now. All right. So I'll go first, starting with the pan rate question first. And by the way, we can only do 10 question blocks. So we'll take five of these and uh, grade them at the end. So. Question number one for me. A four-year-old presents with two-day fever, also has occasional productive cough and clear rhinorrhea. He has been active and eating well. His past medical history is unremarkable and his immune issues up to date. His oxygen saturation is 90% on room air. His examination is remarkable with clear rhinorrhea, bibasilar rails, cataracta. Which of the following is the next best step in management? I feel like you know this one. It sounds like he just has a cold, no? Well, he wouldn't have rails. Cold. <laughs> 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 I'm so bad at this clinical stuff. I don't do this stuff, as you all know. I mean, he has a productive cough with a fever. Oh, productive cough. Productive oh, cough yeah. with a fever. His O2 sat is 96%. I don't know if this is just a cold <laughs> stock. <laughs> yeah, this is why I don't do pediatrics. So the question is, what is he have, like pneumonia or something? Don't tell me. So I feel like this is a... I'm going to go with amoxicillin here. No, way. Odmin, right? I, um, I don't know. I feel like you need to step up the uh, Odmin here. Amoxicillin ovulinate. Well, which is the next step? Oh, the next step? Yeah. So, oh, also, if this was just a cold, they wouldn't just tell you. Yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about that. Oh, did but they did say supportive measures as one of the answer. So I'm going to step up the big guns here and go with Augmentin E. I feel like it should be Amoxicillin. I don't know. <laughs> oh, son of a... I'm the worst pediatrician. What is the explanation here? Supportive measures? Oh, this is a viral pneumonia. I guess it could be. I was in no fever. No, he did. Uh, I don't really know if that. Fever. I don't know if I would. Hmm. That's a tough one. I guess kids don't get. Yeah, I mean. Bacterial pneumonia very often. It's usually viral. I should have said supportive measure because I'm a bad test taker. I wasn't paying attention. That's why I missed this one. I would have gotten that one. If it was actually bacterial pneumonia, it would have been amoxicillin because that's the most community yeah, acquired. Okay. So that's the first treatment of choice. Amoxicillin, um, like augmenting. And augment you yeah. do later on. Okay. I, but I, I it's also the so. Depends on the age, so that they're saying six to five years is oh, yeah. amoxicillin. So. All right, well, we're off to a great start. Pediatrics, really crushing it. All right, you're, you're doing now. All right. A 13-year-old boy presents to the adolescent clinic complaining of darkening of both axilla over the past nine months. These areas enlarge and become rough, raised, and mildly pruritic. His father recalls having similar skin findings at about the same age. His weight and BMI are are at the 98th percentile for the age. Physical exam is remarkable for a thickened, fissured, nearly black plaques with velvety texture in the axilla. That looks like acanthosis nigra can see. So, I mean, if we want to explain this, we definitely know Veruca are warts. This does not look like warts. Lichen planus will be purple. The peas, purple pruritic. These are definitely That's not molluscum. Yay. This is just derm coming in hot yeah this is not fair this is like derm this is rough for alley i got pediatrics is my so, first all right next <sighs> i gotta play a little catch up here all right let's hit number two here i mean i have to agree yours was kind of a little bit a little mine was more challenging 
Yeah. I guess maybe because you know what? He was active and eating well. But then again, they kind of tricked you with like the 96% room air, two days of fever. Yeah. But it's only two days. That was the trick. That's it's not really. All right. I've had enough of that question. <laughs> Next. Oh, the difficulty level was hard. Oh, yeah. The difficulty level was hard. Uh, another. <laughs> I'm the worst at pediatric stuff. And now I got to do more. All right. Five year old girl with no significant past medical history presents with fever, reported rash on several areas of trauma patient. It reports sick contact with similar symptoms as school of the patient. Parents and I cough and shorts, blah, blah, blah. Visitor exam, playful child, no acute stress, drop of vesicles, a single area, dry crust lesion. Oh, I know this one. Yeah. Which of the following is the most appropriate management? I mean, you don't really have to do anything except for if it's painful, right? And she just has a fever. Yeah, so oh, yeah. at this point, I don't think acyclovir is going to help. I don't think getting the vaccine is going to help, and neither will immune globulin. So I'm going to go with, you don't give aspirin to children. So we're doing acetaminophen. Why? What do they get? Ray syndrome. Oh, yeah, Ray syndrome. Yay! Still got it. One for two. Chicken pox. You just do nothing. Yeah. Chicken pox. This is all like supportive treatment. Once they have it, there's nothing you can do. All right, next. For the past two days, a 55-year-old man has experienced flame pain and a fever. A physical exam shows that he has a temperature of 38.5 degrees Celsius and a pulse of 80 beats per minute. Respiration 16 beats per minute. Blood pressure 130 or 80. No protein, glucose, ketones in the urine. Lukes are positive. Some white blood cell gas are occasionally seen, which the following organism is mo most likely present in this patient's urine. I'm gonna go with E. coli. Mm, so, right, it's the most common. I'm, I'm gonna say E. coli because it's the most common, that's what we treat UTIs for. But the thing is the flank pain could be going into a pilo, but he's not really, because he has a fever now and flank pain, so this yeah, is like so kind of pilo. Caused by E. coli. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Mine are like, Pretty right up my alley. I know, it's time to step it up. All right, number three for me. Which of the following serum profiles is associated with the most likely underlying cause of primary hyperparathyroidism? Yeah. All right, we can do this, we can do this. You're going to have decreased parathyroid hormone. I can't, I'm, I can't, this is like my nightmare. <laughs> 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 Trying to th think through this, I just can't do it. After working all day, I just can't do it. Primary hyperparathyroidism? All right, you're gonna have increased ionized calcium, so I can get rid of all the other ones. And you're going to have, I think it's this, right? Because parathyroid hormones are gonna be decreased. Oh wait, no, this is increased. This should be both, no? It's either B or C. Maybe just pick one. <laughs> I don't wanna be wrong. It's fine, babe, then we'll just get another one. Because parathyroid hormone is increased, obviously, which means calcium is also increased. I feel like it's B, but I'm just gonna go with this. Okay, good. <laughs> That was way too difficult. So it's obviously over secretion of the parathyroid hormone by like the adenoma or something, and it causes increased PTH and also increased calcium as a result. Let's go to the next it's one because bones, groans, bones, and groans, and stones, and psychological overtones. Yeah, the, all those bones, groans, stones, psychological overtones. With hypercalcemia. Oh, those bring back memories. All right, Andrea's turn. Question number right. three. This is you. Ooh. Which of the following is, is most likely anyway. the diagnosis given the following abdominal KUB of a neonate with bilious vomiting? All right, so with someone with bilious vomiting, I'm gonna go with it's not a foreign body. This is definitely not a normal KUB. There's something with like two bubbles. Double bubble sign. You see this in patients with Down syndrome. All right, there's something with. You already clicked it. Oh, okay. I mean, so what's the answer? I'm gonna go with D. Duodenal atresia. Yes, 100% final answer. Yay! Duodenal atresia? <laughs> <laughs> well, some people say duodenal, some people say duodenal. I know. Who, who, who says duodenal and who says duodenal? Some surgeons say duodenum. Yeah, and some people say duodenal. I've always said duodenum. Yeah, like same. I've always said duodenum. Like but then some the people tongue. say duodenal. I agree. I don't know why. Mine are easier than yours. I know. I'm well aware. Next. Uh-oh. A little x-ray here. Oh. This would be embarrassing if I get this wrong. All right. 35-year-old um, man brought to the emergency department by ambulance after a skiing accident. His chest x-ray is pictured below. Which of the following explains these findings? Oh, I know, Han. Do you? <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, so his... Endotracheal tube is in the right main stem bronchus, so we'll say that. And that's the reason why his right lung is aerated and his left lung is a little hazy because it's not getting oxygenated like it should. So let's go with boom. You know I'm not gonna miss the radiology question. I mean, I could, but next. Peds oh again. Oh my god, I can't <laughs> deal with all this peed stuff. 
A four-year-old boy presents to the pediatric clinic for evaluation of skin bumps. Ooh! The first bump was noted on the abdomen approximately three months ago and has since disappeared. Approximately four to five similar lesions have appeared over the past two months on the child's chest and back and were mildly paritic. Oh, several playmates reported has similar lesions over the past six months. The exam is remarkable fine, rounded, dome-shaped, pinkish papules with central implications are scattered on the child's chest and back. Oh. Man. We already like had this as a, an answer choice in the last one. I'm gonna go with mollusk on super common. Yay! This is like her bread and butter here. <laughs> so how have you done? You've been, you haven't missed one yet. You have to miss the next one so we can tie or something. So mollusk, pretty obvious. If we maybe, really essential um umbilication that like gives it away. Maybe we can put a picture up here or something of one. Got me. And super common in children who go to daycare. Very common. Very common. All right, let's see how the next one is for me. Oh, what a new one. What? Is this pediatric? Did I click like all pediatric? No, I don't think so. I thought I did everything, but did. apparently it's just pediatric day. No, I mean, no offense against pediatrics. That's just, it's not your. It's not my cup of tea. <laughs> All right, so a term newborn male develops respiratory distress immediately after delivery. His respiratory is 30 minutes, blood pressure is low, physical examination remarkable for decreased right side of breast sounds, a three six to consider machinery murmur. I know what that is. Bowel sounds are present in the right chest. His abdomen is scaphoid. He is acidotic, heart and trachea shifted. Bowel blah, blah, blah. Solid mass likes the prohibition. The solid mass most likely present is, Represents. Oh, represents. So this is a liver. So basically he has a diaphragmatic hernia, but that's rare in a term male. But it sounds like he has a diaphragmatic hernia, which means his whole right abdominal stuff contents is in his right chest. So there's a solid mass in his right chest, and that's probably the liver that's herniated up. Yeah. Four out of five. Not bad, even though that's 80%. That's fine, I'm probably gonna get this one wrong. You have to get this one wrong so that we can be equal. All right, <laughs> really, probably will. Really, what a good will. husband, cheering on my wife to get it wrong. <laughs> All right, number five. Last question. All righty, so a 60 year old man with a history of prior cerebrovascular accident presents with difficulty comprehending spoken conversation for the past two hours. His speech is fluent but nonsensical and he cannot repeat words or phrases. Which of the following areas of the brain is most likely affected? All right. Some neuro. I'm going to go with B. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so now we are officially tied. We both got 80% here. Four out of five questions each, which makes me feel a little better about myself. Oh, this is broke us with they're incapable of producing fluent speech. He had some understanding. Oh, well, that's... All right, got that wrong. Knew I was gonna get it wrong. Yeah, okay, so we tied officially, which makes me feel a little better about myself. So mark up 80% for both of us here. So we tied this on this day. I will say though, if I didn't get so many pediatric questions, I could have made 100%. Yeah, and if I didn't have these biology questions. So that officially concludes this video, doctor versus PA board exam <laughs> edition. Hope you all enjoyed it. Big thanks to Board Vitals for sponsoring this video once again. Use my code Dr. Cellini. It's D R C E L L I N I. You'll get 20% off your purchase. Whether you're a nursing student, PA, med student, med student, radiologist, pharmacist, you name it, look on their website, boardvitals.com. Use my code Dr. Cellini to get 20% off. And yeah. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash and like. No, smash that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you on our next video. Oh, so <laughs> Make sure you follow me on TikTok. I just started posting some crazy stuff over there. Follow her on TikTok as well, and Instagram for the both of us. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Thanks.